Hello everyone. Uh, today I wanted to cover something very special to a lot of people and that is the proportions of a head. Um, I'm going to try and make this quicker and I just want to guide you through it and these aren't hard and fast rules like I always say but these are some basic principles you can follow to make your life a little bit easier. So let's begin. Um, what you want to do is, there's actually several methods to draw the head, and you should try all of them. There's the Riley method, there's the Loomis method, and then I have my own little method that's... Uh, I'm not quite sure if it works for everyone, but it does work for me, but it might not work for you. Or it might help you understand certain things about the face. Um, this method kind of evolved out of the Loomis and Riley method a little bit and just general overall practice with a lot of drawing people's faces. And so um, it might not always work or entirely be accurate, but it is a, a close approximation to the proportions of the face without it being too intimidating with all these random lines. So to start with, I'm going to start with a circle like so. Okay. And from here, you want to find a middle line. This can actually be a hard step. If you haven't practiced finding middle lines, this can be a really hard step. So I, I understand if you get confused, if you get trouble from here. But for now, if you can find the middle of the head, you can use a measurement or ruler. But I always like to freehand everything. Um, Mostly because then you build up the skill of uh, understanding measurements without having to measure everything and then you're less stressed out every time. And you, you get used to being less perfect about everything. So I want you to find the middle line, like so. Okay, and I'm gonna make this as easy as possible because I skip a lot of steps when I do stuff. This middle line is where the eyebrow will sit and it will sit on top of it. But we're not going to worry about that just yet. So what are we going to do first is we're going to draw a line underneath. Um, you can put this line basically anywhere, but if you constrain it within the circle, which is our, our set measurement, um, just give it a good enough gap. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be there. It just needs to be a line underneath to dictate relatively where the eyes are. Now, there is another part, which is the bridge of the nose, which is where we're going to put right here. So this is a trapezoid as far as I'm aware. And that's where the bridge of the nose is. And that's all we're going to use for now. So what we're going to do from here is actually start putting in details. And a lot of people would suggest against this. Um, that is entirely up to you. Uh, you could map out the whole face first, draw it, and then realize one measurement was off. Uh, I use this method mostly when I do caricaturing just to give me a rough estimate when I need to. Sometimes you do need to practice the other methods first. So I'm just going to put that forward first. But here is how I go about things. So first, I'm going to draw a couple of circles. Now I don't do this when I do caricatures anymore because I've just understood relatively where the eyes are. Um, and usually with a normal person's head, the eyes should be about one width apart from each other. So the gap in between here is one width. That's not always true, but it is mostly true. So when you're drawing a face from imagination or just making up your own face, you want to have at least equal spacing between the eyes. And this line is where the eyeball where, is where the eye will sit. So we're going to start putting in details because some people might get anxious to do that. So make sure it follows about this distance and eyebrow will usually come across to here. And then from here, we'll just, there are many shapes of the eyebrows, there are many shapes of the noses, there are many shapes of the lips. Draw whatever shape you want for now. It's not about being perfect, it's just about mapping out roughly how the face works. So we can just add some context to that, add some context to that. Cool. And then from here, we want to use this gap to understand the, like, so people have different faces. Sometimes this gap is huge. Sometimes this gap doesn't exist at all. For an average person, we'll just leave a little bit of a gap right where this line is. So from here, I want you to try and draw. So most eye shapes kind of go like this. So we're going to do that one. And it's just not going to touch the line, but it's going to come close to here. 
And for most most styles, this is where it usually is. Um, usually I only top, draw the top eyelid and then I draw the second eyelid if they have one. I don't usually draw the bottom one completely because if you do that, the eye starts to look a bit too strong or the underline looks too strong. So you can just add like a little bit down here and that's where the eye goes. And eyes are not that hard to draw. You just draw a circle, a circle, that's the highlight. You draw a nice, solid, iris and then you've got an eye and if you want to you can add a little bit of a corner here and a little bit of a corner here but I tend to avoid the rest of the bottom of the eye because it makes it look like they have droopy eye and the only reason you don't do that here if you're doing it really fast and rough is because uh, to get that to work you need the rest of the face to make sense and this is just trying to do it with mostly lines so this is what I came up with. Now, if we want to know where the nose is, I have this really cool trick. First, you take the bottom of the eye, which is here, and you draw a square. And that is actually roughly the distance to where the nostril will be. So the nostril will be about here. And this is how I actually measure it when I'm trying to go quick. There is this, so the width of the eye is roughly to where the nostril will be. This is not always true, but this is what I have found to be mostly the case and what is acceptable if I'm cartooning or if I'm caricaturing. Usually people don't look past the eyes anyway, but if you want to, your nose to be at a relatively safe distance, just draw uh, an imaginary square underneath and then put the nostrils right where that is. Um, when I draw the nose, I have some rules if it's Women and I'm trying to make them look beautiful, I only draw the nostrils. If I'm trying to, if I draw boys, sometimes I'll add a little bit underneath and then I'll just add the indication of uh, some where the form is. Usually I imagine a light source and then the shadow, just drawing the shadow lines on the other side. And that's all you need to do. Um, if you draw too many lines with just trying to draw a face with lines, it's gonna look weird, like I said. Okay, and now the distance between the nose and the mouth, I have another trick. Just take this distance, so the eye width, sorry, the, yeah, the eye width, take that distance, put it down here, and roughly, that is where the top of the mouth is. Roughly, roughly, roughly. Again, not hard and fast. Some people's lips come all the way up to their nose, but that's usually not the case. That's a little bit of the distance. I tend not to draw fulcrums, but you can. Um, uh, the width of the mouth is actually another one of those, so you can do that, but some people have different lip shapes, so you need to adjust for that. Uh, I'll cover that in another video. The uh, corners of the mouth should come roughly at the edges of the eye, here. That's roughly where they should be. And I usually just draw the bottom part of the lip and just the very top bit of the mouth, like so. So now we have the features as they are and for the last bit you can just take that measurement again and then put it down here and that's roughly where the chin is all right so i tried to simplify it by using relative measurements they won't always be perfect they won't always be 100 percent accurate but that's not what we're here for we're just trying to draw fast and loose and have some fun with drawing faces and get ourselves used to it when you're trying to draw from a more really realistic version, you do need to measure these out. But these measurements have helped even in those cases. So now, just draw a couple of this, um, just like a parentheses, and then here. And the chin usually comes to about where the mouth is, like so. Um, ears will come to the top of the eyebrow, and you just make a big curve, and then to the bottom of the nose, like so. Big, 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 um, coming up. And then at the top here, at the top of the dome, that's where we can start to add hair. And I find hair, among the things, uh, among the features to draw, hair and the eyes are the most important parts of the face. You can get those right. It doesn't matter where you put the nose, how badly that you sh shape the lips, people will still think it's a face, okay? So this is the most important thing when you get that down, then also the hair shape. But that's just my opinion. Most people will think everything matters. Um, as a car caricaturist for myself, it, certain things don't matter, some things do matter. It purely depends. But I hope this was a easy enough to follow guide. Let me know your thoughts and queries down below. I would love to hear from you all. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.